right. Whew. Let's see if we're running live. See how everybody's doing. <clears throat> there we go. We're now live. Hey, Tally, how you doing? What is up? All right, guys, it seems that we're 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 shooting we're live so if you're on youtube or periscope land shoot me a comment let me know you're there because i am restreaming this and that's the only way that i i can see you all egan in florida how are you doing all right everyone's coming in yes guys <laughs> thank you tally yeah i just got one uh i feel fresh and fine and let me tell you tally um, we're on lockdown again, and so I was happy to be able to grab a, a cut yesterday. Um, you know, it's funny. I, I obviously, I know that this is not a very conventional styled haircut. However, it's an homage to a lot of my heroes, and it's it carries with it a certain amount of, of different styles all in one. And what I laugh about when it comes, my mom was a hairdresser, so I've never really had a conventional cut really all of my life. So I've gained, as a kid, I became accustomed to having some sort of do. <laughs> so even in adulthood at 46, it's like, I don't see the reason for to be contemporary when I don't have to be contemporary. As you know, I'm a huge proponent of self-expression in everything that you do. Your communication, your dress, your hairstyle. I mean, it all says something about you. Now, isn't there a an idea of being practical or contemporary or sending the correct messages absolutely but do you but do you really want to be so contemporary do you really want to be so practical that you don't use your own real estate space to say something about yourself that's important and so I have a background in playing music and and being obsessed with music and that's part of my personality and makeup of who I am in my former career as well as now. I still enjoy uh, playing in bands and going to see music. In fact, that's the thing that I miss must, missed most about COVID. It is not being able to go out and see and support and encourage young bands. Um, I, to me, that form of self-expression is available to anybody. And I love the idea about getting in a room with your best bros and being able to express yourself in a way that is collaborative with the others. And you have to, there is a certain amount of intimacy when you're playing music with somebody that you are vulnerable and exposed and just putting it out there. Sid, how are you doing, buddy? Good to see you all making it over to the show. Uh, Vaughn's uh, Swab, welcome. And Tally, I don't see a gray hair on your head. You got lucky. Well, I can tell you, there are plenty. I guess they're not, they're not so much um, clustered than the fact that they're going to show up. But yes, there are plenty and I see more and more every day. All right, so today I wanted to talk about a couple of things. Number one, it is International Nude Day. Yes, I don't know if you had seen that on Twitter. Uh, what does that mean? We send nudes? I was gonna show up on here nude today. But I believe Instagram would have given me a, a the boot. <laughs> anyway, if you would like to see some uh, interesting nudes, you can always go to Free Candy's Instagram. She does she does um, she does uh, pencil drawings of of 
of the the human figure and anatomy, and she's she's quite brilliant. She did a fan art of me, not of my anatomy, but of of this picture that you're seeing right now, which I've used to advertise this before. Uh, Spark Assess, how are you doing today? Good for you to, to, more, to make it over. So yes, guys, we are in lockdown number two. I mentioned, what it was it, two weeks ago, that it seemed like we were heading in that direction. And here's the thing about it. No one should be angry about this outside of the fact that it is frustrating. But what have I said from the beginning of this? That it's going to be touch and go. That we're going to have to look at this like an entrepreneur looks at marketing. Putting a few things out there, see how the audience reacts, uh, make iterations and pivots, and then put it back out there. Well, yeah, that's what we're trying to do. Open up a few things, have a few phases that open, let people get back to work, see how things play out. And then if, 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 it, if it needs to be reeled back, then you will. If you need to make iterations to the phases, you will. However, the one thing that I don't think most people were anticipating during all this iterations and pivoting with this entrepreneurial style of effort to see where we are with COVID is, is people that were so um, so so worked up in it, that it was about uh, you cannot get it right the first time. It is a it is a novel situation. But we also didn't anticipate, at least here in Los Angeles, you know, fifty thousand people going out into the streets for uh, ten days straight for protesting. Like that's not going to help the situation. And I'm in. And so. In order to avoid a charge topic, I'm not even going to go into that right now. As you guys know, if you watch this show, you know how I feel about all that. Luis, how are you doing, buddy? Spanish Fly 79, how are you doing? Uh, right on. So with that brings another opportunity of being in lockdown, which is to do another assessment of where you were from March when this started. Did you make plans on working out a certain amount of times uh, <clears throat> during the week? Did you plan on putting together certain, uh, working on certain skills while you were in lockdown? Did, <clears throat> did you open up opportunities to reach out to people that you haven't spoken to in a, in a while? in order to open some doors, reconnect, and reestablish those lines of communication? Have you been able to do all those? Number one, have you done them to the, to the success and the limits that you wanted to? If not, what can you do better for you to hit those moments? And three, as, as, as for myself, I'm staring at lockdown number two. What things do I want to pick up or continue to strengthen as I have this opportunity? That's what I'm looking at here. How about for you guys? What is your COVID situation like? Are you back on lockdown? Have you, are have things still at a half go? Are you in phases of opening? Um, I don't know how long this is going to last. I know that there, once again, we're at a wait and see situation, but I just wanted to reiterate is that this is something that I had spoken about multiple times of the gently opening up, getting people back to work and seeing how things go. Now that's, the situation, if 50,000 people run out onto the street for 10 days of protesting, 
Well, yeah, there's going to be spikes. Certainly not going to help everything. Eric says phase four in Chicago. How is that looking for you, Eric? What does that entail? Is it feeling good? Everyone getting back at it? Is it a noticeable difference? Uh, Louise says, I'm doing great. Man, Arkansas has not been taking COVID uh, seriously. The only time Arkansas went in, into restrictions is when the president made an announcement of restrictions. Ah. I'm a Spanish 75, uh, 79 says, I'm an essential worker and my daily weekday routine hasn't changed that much since the start. Well, that good for you, Spanish 79. Um, having that shift in responsibilities and habits is definitely tough. Well, with that, depending on your situation, like for myself, I have another more opportunity to continue just working on things as the my social realm is it going to open up, open back up. We have been awfully busy at AOC, as a lot of you guys know. <coughs> <clears throat> and our programs are running as usual. Spark of Sass, Portland continues to, continues protests, makes contact tracing impossible. Well, Portland, Spark of Sass, I don't, I don't know what information that everyone else is getting on Portland. However, I follow the situation there rather closely and I'm seeing a lot of, um, stuff on Twitter from actual footage and it does not look like a place that I want to move to. It looks a little bit, it looks in, incredibly chaotic at the moment. Uh, Eric too, it's working out so far. Restaurants and gyms are open now and cases have been stable. Scheduled to go back to the office Labor Day. Right on. There isn't a huge spike before that. Yeah. Well, let's, let's hope. This is the thing you, the, the papers and the media and everyone else, you cannot listen to any of these people. This idea that 50,000 people in the streets for 10 days is not spreading the, the flu, the, the COVID is just ridic ridiculous. Uh, Reno from Michigan, life is giving us a chance to go inside. Uh, face it or face it or not. Sometimes we don't like to look at it. But this is a time to connect with our emotions and see how strong we get. 100% Reno Nova. I agree. Hippie in the Hills. How are you doing? Here's the thing. I had saw this tweet from a friend earlier when COVID started about lockdowns. And, for, and, he, and he stated that, that many people were having a difficult time being in lockdown with somebody that they don't know. And I, my first thought was, well, what do you mean by that? Don't people know their significant other or their um, housemates? No, that's not what he was referring to. What he was referring to was being locked indoors with yourself for the first time and having so much time that you begin to start asking yourself questions. You begin to start getting in touch with yourself or you begin, uh, we're having issues over in uh, YouTube land today. <clears throat> but with all of that time by yourself and alone, I'm just going to leave that. <clears throat> it only opens up <clears throat> the opportunity of getting to know yourself. And for some of us, for the very first time because you have all of this distraction around yourself, video games and, and entertainment and, and Netflix. So why would you check in with yourself? And when you ask hard questions of yourself, it demands the mind to find answers. So if you begin to start asking yourself questions, you might not like the answers. The, the other thing is, you have to commit to an answer. You have to say, yes, this bothers me or no, this doesn't bother me or somewhere in the middle. For a lot of us, we don't really know how we feel about a lot of things because we have numbed ourselves 
to our daily experience through escapism. You don't have to answer those hard questions when you have a new Netflix series to binge on. You don't have to ask yourself those hard questions when you have a new video game to play, a new hobby to dump yourself into. This is why in today's connected world, we have to take time out to ask and answer those questions so that, so that we can feel good about ourselves. This is, <clears throat> and this is what leads me into what I wanted to speak about today, which is a mindset shift for being a high value person because you were not born a high value person and your brain is not programmed to look at things from a high value uh, perspective. You are programmed to view yourself in the world of getting as much <clears throat> resources as possible and also not only the resources, but looking for ways to allow yourself to feel good. We allow ourselves to feel good by getting attention, approval, and acceptance for ourselves. It allows us to feel accepted, connected, and this is what allows us to feel good. Eric John says, idle time is definitely uncomfortable, but self-development is supposed to be uncomfortable. It's a boring job, definitely affects me more when I don't have as many distractions. I cannot agree with you more, uh, Eric, and here's the thing about it. It's uncomfortable because once you start asking yourself questions, and if you don't like the answers or you're not, you don't enjoy the truth of how you answered it, you now have to take responsibility to then choose it. You have that opportunity. In order to change how you feel about something, you're now going to need to step outside of your comfort zone, which is always difficult. But you can learn to enjoy the process so that you seek it out, or you can learn to shut that process down so that you can become numb to the experience. So you're programmed for survival and you're also programmed to get attention, approval, and acceptance for yourself. The more attention, approval, and acceptance that you go to get for yourself, the better you feel, or at least you are programmed to feel that if you get attention, approval, acceptance, that you're going to feel good. We seek it out. It's in our nature. When you get attention, approval, and acceptance for yourself, you get a hit of dopamine. You get flushed with dopamine as a feel good, that you feel safe, you feel connected, and this allows you to feel good for the time being, which leads you to seek it out more. We're all drug addicts. We like to feel good, dopamine, serotonin, are the drugs that we produce that allow us to feel like that. This is why cocaine and methamphetamine is so addictive. Now, you are programmed to seek attention, approval, and acceptance out. You're programmed to seek it out. You're programmed to look for it. You have four presets in how you go about getting attention, approval, and acceptance for yourself. Low value people chase attention, approval, and acceptance. So if I was going into a networking event or a social engagement, I am going to look for opportunities that would put attention, approval, and acceptance towards me. So I can either um, be gregarious, be very outward going, I can bully people, I can look to play the victim and get sympathy, which is a, uh, will be a form of attention, approval, and acceptance, but in a supplicative manner. I could be combative in the way where I can bully people in order to get attention, 
approval and acceptance. I can compete for it where I look for opportunities to show up other people in order to get me attention, approval, and acceptance. Now, all three of the ways I suggested to do that are low value behaviors. They are three effective ways to get attention, approval, and acceptance, but carry with it low value connotations for they not only do they get attention, approval, and acceptance, or at least in some manner, it also pushes others away. Why? Because you're taking attention, approval, and acceptance from others through a, a, a way that pushes others away. So if you're playing the victim card and I give you the attention that you're craving, that only reinforces that behavior. So you continue to do it. There's only so much of you playing a victim that I can understand before either A, you need to change your behaviors because being a victim is not going to help you or it's going to repel me rather than attracting me. This is why when it comes to courtship, playing the victim is not a good strategy. <laughs> so what is the mindset shift that you would need in order to get attention, approval, and acceptance for yourself, but it, you're attracting it rather than chasing it? Because things that you chase tend to run. They run away. You ever grown up with a, with a, I grew up with Yorkies. And if you chase the dog outside, he would take off running. When you chase attention, approval, and acceptance, it tends to elude you. So there are mindsets that produce behaviors that attract attention, approval, and acceptance in a positive mindset rather than repelling it. So what is the mindset shift that allows for different behaviors that attract attention, approval, acceptance, rather than repel it? Well, it is rather than supplicative behaviors, which tend to be playing a victim, uh, combative ways, which is bullying people, <clears throat> Com competitive mindsets, which puts you in a frame of always looking for competitions or ways to show that you're better than others. <clears throat> Lastly is a cooperative behavior where you look to give value. So rather than seeking value, you're looking to give value. So when you give value to any human being, which is a basic need of attention, approval, and acceptance, you're filling a void that everyone is looking to fill. When you would do that effectively, you're now putting people in a position to chase the drug, the dopamine hit, that you are able to give them by the services and the value that you are providing to those people. You have flipped the script. Once you understand how to do that, and once the mindset gets shifted, then you the game now becomes a law of averages, where you become a high value person and you reap the rewards of being a high value person. You're now have flipped a script from being somebody who is in chase mode to somebody who is now being a high value person where others are now chasing you. That is the, is the mindset shift that flips the script that puts you from, from, the, from the person doing the chasing to the person being chased. Now, is that a shift that, or a switch that you can just turn on? No, that is a set of skills 
mindsets and behaviors that are cultivated over a set amount of time. How did this work for myself? Well, as I had gotten into my older 20s, into my later 20s, I had begun, I had begun to get tired of the mindsets and behaviors that weren't leading me to the results that I was looking for in my own life. I was getting frustrated. I felt trapped. I felt defeated, frustrated, that everything that I did on a daily basis felt that I was struggling. It felt difficult. It seemed like a lot of work. I was going to bed every evening, exhausted and frustrating, not wanting to have to deal with the next day because the amount of work that I was going to have to put in didn't show up in the results that I was getting. For any young person, you have a choice in that matter of whether you're going to elevate yourself to get better results or accept the status quo. When I looked at the situation in my late 20s and realizing that I wasn't happy with those results, I was going to, I was not happy with the status quo and that I was going to do what it takes. I was going to do what it would take to change those results. Well, then, then became the slow transition from a low value mindset to a high value mindset. And this begins an opportunity, a journey, and a road of, of unlocking your X factor. And that's life. Once you make that shift, once you flip that switch, each day becomes increasingly better than the last. Why? Because the train isn't barreling down the wrong way, down the tracks. It is now moving in the right direction, but much like a train, a locomotive, it needs to build up momentum. So each day that you practice these skills, mindsets, and behaviors, you continue to get better. Each day becomes more enjoyable than the last. This is why people in self-development tend to be optimists because they, they are continually building a skill set that allows them to reap rewards on a daily basis. It becomes fun. That's what developing your X factor is all about. So with that guys, I'm on a lockdown number two here in Los Angeles. I will be moving to Vegas, uh, hopefully soon next month. And, but I will be continuing the show. I'm definitely due for a change of scenery. And I appreciate you guys all being here. I was having issues in Restream today, so I'll have to check that out. Uh, I want to thank you guys for all coming in. Dan Andrews from Knoxville, how you doing? Uh, Miss Bad Rudden, how you doing? Welcome. Good to see you. Thank you, Eric, for your comments. Matthew, Hippie the Hills, Tally. Good to see you guys. All right, guys, I got to head out. If you are interested in our year-long mentorship program, to bring out your X Factor, <clears throat> all you gotta do is shoot me a text, X Factor or mentorship, and you'll well, you'll get a calendar invite and we'll, we'll have a chat. Outside of that, if you wanna, if you enjoy what I had to say and you wanna learn more, check out the Art of Charm Communication Accelerator. The link is in the link tree of uh, Instagram and Twitter. It has all the best bits from our live training programs and online class over the last 15 years, an expert guest in connection, persuasion, influence, and networking. All right, guys, I will see you all here tomorrow, 8.30. Thank you, Louise, for showing up. It's awesome to see you. Thank you, Spanish Fly and Reno. All right, guys, and Dan Andrews, you guys take care. I will talk to you all soon.